Assalamu alaikum everyone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We apologize for the delay. Um, we actually uh, had incorrectly sent out the, the wrong um, access link, um, but we, we corrected that now. So we should be seeing a lot more people coming into today's session, uh, inshallah. Um, especially in about a minute or two, because we're we're sending out a text message with a correction link, inshallah. Um, before we get started, today's teacher, inshallah, will be Ustada Hosai Mujaddidi, and I will uh, be introducing her in a bit, inshallah. Um, but we want to encourage everyone to go ahead and check out social uh, Celebrate Mercy's social media pages, inshallah, where you can share the live now flyer. So we have posted on our Instagram, on our Facebook, on our Twitter, um, this flyer with a, with the access link to tonight's program, inshallah. So we wanna encourage you guys to share that from our social media pages. Um, the hashtag for today's event is actually a heart CM. That's heart CM. So please um, make sure to use that hashtag as you post inspirational quotes or pictures today, and please make sure to tag Celebrate Mercy. We will be retweeting you guys and sharing some of your posts, inshallah. Um, Celebrate Mercy teaches about the life and character of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and we do that through webinars, events, social media campaigns, and trips. Alhamdulillah, since COVID-19 pandemic uh, broke out worldwide, we've been hosting webinar after webinar, almost on a weekly basis. Um, alhamdulillah to tens of thousands of people, online courses. Alhamdulillah, we've tried to shift all of our programming online over the past two months, alhamdulillah. And we want, also wanna remind you that we have a daily class as well about Surah Yasin, which is at 1 p.m. Eastern time every day where the entire uh, Surah of Yasin is recited for about 15 or 20 minutes, followed by a commentary or reflections on verses from that surah. And if you don't wanna miss any of our live streams or uh, you know posted videos that we post, uh, that we po put on our YouTube channel, then make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and click on the bell so that you're notified whenever we post new programs out there, inshallah. Um, that said, I do want to turn it over to, I do have a few other announcements that I'll be making uh, shortly, inshallah, but I do want to turn it over now to Ustada Hosai Mujaddidi, who will uh, give some introductory remarks, um, and she is actually going to be breaking her fast in a couple of minutes. Um, so as she, has, as she is breaking her fast, I will actually make a more formal introduction uh, to Ustada Hosai, inshallah, um, and share a few announcements as she is breaking her fast because she is on the West Coast. Um, uh, she's on the West Coast in California. So inshallah, Ustada Hosai, you can go ahead and begin and then we'll, we'll take a, a break while you break your fast, inshallah, and I'll make my more formal introduction of you during your fast breaking, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, Tariq. Um, I actually looked at the time. I had the time wrong. So my fast, I can break it right now. So oh, I'll, okay. Yeah, I'll break Perfect. it right now. That works out perfectly then. Okay. Let me, um, let me pull up the bio here and go forward with that. Inshallah. So let me introduce Ustada Hosai Mujadidi. She is the founder of the website MH4M, which is mentalhealthformuslims.com. And for over 20 years, she has been actively involved in the Muslim community in the San Francisco Bay Area and Southern California, uh, working and volunteering for several organizations, including Peace Terrace Academy, Zaytuna College, and RIS. In the various positions she's held and, at, as a, and as a Quran teacher and lecturer over the years, she has been able to gauge the mental health issues of the larger community firsthand by serving as a private mediator, advisor, and mentor to many. Currently, she teaches classes once a month at Ta'lif Collective for women 
and offers workshops and other talks to Islamic schools and masajid for the greater community. So we're really honored to have her with us. And uh, before she starts, um, then I'll go ahead and make an annou another announcement as she is breaking her fast. Um, Alhamdulillah, we have been doing our annual fundraising drive at Celebrate Mercy. Um, every year in Ramadan, we do a huge fundraising drive in Ramadan. We've been able to raise about 45% of our goal so far. So we hope in these blessed nights of Ramadan, inshallah, you will remember to support Celebrate Mercy so that we can continue uh, putting out programs like the one that you're watching today about the life and character of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the website where you can make a donation. And what I would even encourage you to do is schedule an alarm on your phone every night so that on the last remaining nights of Ramadan, inshallah, you are making a donation, whether it's big or small, you're making a donation to celebrate mercy on each of these blessed nights of Ramadan, inshallah. And maybe on one of those nights, you will catch Laylatul Qadr, inshallah, and your donation will be multiplied by 1,000 months of donating because Laylatul Qadr, good deeds are worth 1,000 months worth of good deeds, inshallah. Especially on Tuesday night, we want to encourage you guys to remember to give to us on the 27th night because we have the opportunity to win a big prize from Launch Good if we can be the organization that has the most supporters or raises the most funds, inshallah. We do also have a zakat eligible scholarship fund so that we so we can accept zakat and we use it to provide scholarships to those who cannot afford our programs so these are just some things to note and keep in mind on the virtues of charity and whatnot uh, you know like the importance of giving in ramadan the importance uh, of of charity in terms of extinguishing our sins and we also do ship appreciation gifts in the mail for larger donations. So if you donate $50, $100, $200, $1,000, then we actually have amazing gifts that we send you in the mail, inshallah, for your donations. Um, later on to, in today's program, um, we are gonna be selecting a winner uh, of an Umrah trip, inshallah, and other prizes for some of our volunteers who helped us in a recent contest uh, in, in, in our fundraising efforts. So uh, at the end of our program, actually, Ustada Hosai will be selecting winners of an Umrah trip, inshallah. And we'll be talking more about that uh, a bit later, inshallah. That said, I don't want to delay you know, the program any further. There are a couple of other announcements, but um, we'll wait till the end of the program, inshallah. And I'm going to turn it over now to Ustada Hosai to begin with today's lesson. Following her lesson, she'll be speaking for about 20 minutes or so. And then we're going to open it up to questions and answers. So as you listen, if you have questions, type them in the Q&A module. Or um, if you want to use your microphone, you can raise your hand and we will reach out to you so that we can turn on your mic, inshallah, for your audio questions if you have some, inshallah. Seda Hosai, the, the stage is now yours. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. I don't know if you guys can see me yet because I don't see me, but let me know if. Yes. Okay, you can see me. Alhamdulillah. Sorry, I'm just going to fix my mic here. My sound is clear, right? Yep. So, all right. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrif al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen. Sayyidina wa maulana wa habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa salam. Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa salam tasliman kathira. Assalamu alaikum to all of you who are watching. Thank you, Sidi Tariq, and the entire Celebrate Mercy fantastic dream team. Really, everybody is so amazing on this team. MashaAllah. Please make dua for them. Don't forget them. But thank you again for the incredible honor of being here. Um, you know, there's nothing like spending your uh, nights in this blessed time uh, in praise of the Prophet Sallallahu So I'm so honored to, again, be with all of you. Um, for those of you who may have heard me speak before, you may know that one of my favorite topics to talk about with relation to the Prophet Sallallahu is his emotional intelligence. I've actually been speaking a lot about this in this uh, during Ramadan and, and, and well, since the quarantine started. Uh, but I'm not going to go through the presentation that I normally do today. I'm going to touch upon one of the definitions or qualities of someone with emotional intelligence. Now, for those who may not be familiar with this framework, just a quick summary. 
Emotional intelligence, there are five uh, key qualities that someone with emotional intelligence possesses. The first is self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and uh, social skills. So again, normally I would go over all five of these qualities and parallel them with the prophetic model uh, because it's incredible when you actually start to see that really when they're, you know, whoever or the people who established this framework, they were, uh, they, they, they didn't know, but we know as Muslims that really they're describing prophetic qualities and it's really beautiful to see the parallels. So, but because we don't have that much time, I'm gonna focus on the fourth quality today, which is empathy. And so uh, to define empathy, because again, this term, we may be familiar with it, but it's really important to know how to distinguish it from another term that it's often used, you know, uh, interchanged with, uh, which is sympathy. So empathy comes from the Greek M, which means in and pathos, which means feeling. So when you have empathy, you're in feeling with someone, you, you're actually experiencing it with them. Whereas sympathy comes from the Greek for with, sim and pathos feeling, which is more that you're with them in that space and you're observing them, but you, you're not necessarily impacted by the same emotions that they are. So very different. And that's why it's important to uh, know that this is, again, a hallmark quality of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, there are not enough hours in our day or days in our month or months in our years really to list the virtues of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we know when we look at the qualities of empathy, of being an empath person, which is really about regulating one's emotions and also being able to manage other people's emotions. Nobody, nobody on the planet exceeded the example of the Prophet Sallallahu He is the paragon of perfection in every regard. And so um, I wanted to now go over this hadith that we're going to talk about and then relate it to uh, other hadith as well that just display this quality of empathy. So inshallah, what we can go ahead and pull up the hadith and we'll talk about this hadith in depth as uh, time permits and then I'll give you some more hadith to reflect on that once again remind us of the incredible empathic nature of our beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam so th this is hadith 331 of the shama'il it's haddathana ali ibn hujr qala haddathana suwaid ibn abdul aziz an humaid an anis ibn malik أن أمرأة جاءت إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالت له إن لي إليك هاجة فقال اجلسي في أي طريق المدينة شئت أجلسي إليك okay. And so now let's look at the English so Anas ibn Malik uh, عن, reported that a woman came to the Prophet وسلم, and said, I need something from you. He was sitting with his companions, actually. He's sitting in a group with his companions and she basically just came into his conversation and she said this, she made this request of him. And the Prophet وسلم, replied, he said to her, sit on any street of Medina that you wish, that you wish, and I will come and sit with you. SubhanAllah, let's just, again, think of the, these words, look at these words and just reflect on them for just a moment. And now let's look at how the Prophet I mean, there's so many lessons we can uh, take from this e exchange. It's so short and simple. And of, of course, there's more to the story afterwards, but even in this just brief description, we can take so much from the Prophet Sallallahu example. First and foremost, you know, when you think about um, all of us, you know, when we are ever in a gathering with our friends or peers, or whether it's at work or school or, you know, anywhere in a social gathering, and someone comes and interrupts the gathering, for some people, they may take offense to that, right? I mean, you're not, you're having a good conversation with someone and then someone just interrupts you. So right away, you know, we're being tested, right? And many of us, again, we may be reactive and we don't like that and we take offense and we might slip and say something that, uh, that's not very uh, kind. But here the Prophet Sallallahu even though he was again with his uh, companions, he immediately responded to her in a way that shows that he cares and that he is honoring her. And uh, you know, it, there's other narrations that actually give further description about this woman that really makes this such a, a incredible story. She wasn't just an average woman. Actually, some of the narrations say that she was known to have mental health issues. So this is a woman who was known for not being quote unquote stable. 
And so again, that adds another layer of, of just how exceptional the Prophet's response was and how he received her with so much compassion. Because again, most people, you know, as someone who again does mental health advocacy work, I know that for a lot of people, people who seem unstable or not mentally well are actually kind of intimidating and they run from those situations. They actually don't ever want to engage people like that. You'll see see it even walking in a in a, in a you know populated city where there are homeless people or people who are, you know, sometimes you find these people who are talking to themselves and a lot of people are afraid of them. And so here, this woman who had this, she was known to not be well, the Prophet Sallallahu is honoring her. He's allowing her to first and foremost make the request without any interruption, without stopping her and saying, wait, what, I'm in a conversation. Can't you see we're here? You know, we're talking here. Uh, he didn't dismiss her, like go away. I, I don't want to talk to you. So he first let her make her request. And then SubhanAllah, again, look at the way that he responded. I mean, most of us, if we're being honest, uh, if when, when someone approaches us for any need, we first do that little mental sort of check, you know, am I gonna, is there a benefit in, in, it, in it for me to, uh, to, to accept this request, whether it's a phone call, an email, someone comes at the door, we always do those, you know, uh, the, the, the ways, right? We, we're weighing the situation to see whether or not we're going to benefit. And if there's a benefit in us, even then, subhanAllah, it's not so easy. We'll, you know, go through this process of, uh, you know, tell me your schedule. And, you know, you kind of give the person a little bit of a runaround until there's an opportunity or time that your schedule permits. And then even then, we're so quick to rush the conversation and move forward from it because we have better things to do. So it's a timed conversation. It's a timed, limited amount of time that we give this, per, uh, the, the whoever's asking. So that's if there's a benefit. Now here, knowing that this person is not stable or not well mentally, the Prophet ﷺ, he is clearly not thinking about any benefit to himself. And so, and, and then to make this offer to her, that go to any of the streets of Medina and I will come to you. Look at the graciousness, the incredible generosity, the magnanimity and the display that he's showing to all of the companions who are observing that this person who came and had a need, he is. there's no incentive for him to meet with her other than to just honor her request. And that's exactly what he did. And then we also have to think about the context. This is a, a society where women for, for a long time were considered sub, you know, they, they were subhuman. They weren't even considered part of, you know, the mainstream and in any way they were considered like cattle. So here he's again honoring uh, her uh, as a woman that she has, you know, his audience and that he is willing to go out of his way to accommodate her. So subhanAllah, so much honoring that's happening. And then another layer that the fact again that she's mentally unstable and unwell, he's also teaching, right? And this is something that we have to remember always about the Prophet Sallallahu that he always engaged his inner uh, interlocutors in a way that they felt important, they felt seen, they felt heard. And so he didn't change because she was someone who was mentally compromised. You know, if you think about it, many of us, again, if we're talking to people that we think are maybe, whether it's, you know, people do this with children, for example, you know, they don't treat children with the same degree of respect that they would maybe a coworker or a, a dignitary or someone of importance importance because they look at a child as being not as, you know, immature and not at my level. And so you can kind of lose your comportment maybe and speak to them in a way that really shows that you don't have, there's no mutual respect. Well, the Prophet ﷺ certainly didn't do that, even though she was someone again, who's, who was mentally unstable. He, he actually did the opposite. He honored her even more so. And this is all teaching, right? He's always, he's always teaching the Prophet ﷺ. And uh, and, and so we have to see that the companions are observing this whole all play out. And subhanAllah, he's again, extending so much compassion and so much mercy because why this is what an empath, someone who is an empath does, they think of the other, they think of the other person's need. They're, they're not even in the equation of the situation. They're always concerned about other people. And there are so many examples time and time and time again, we see uh, that the Prophet is teaching us about what empathy truly is. 
ways. And this wasn't just for human beings. And that's the other thing we really have to appreciate is that his empathy extended to all creation, right? He's the universal prophet, which means all of creation benefited from his, his mercy. And this, there are so many stories of animals that were brought to tears. The camel, for example, who was in the orchard. And upon seeing the Prophet ﷺ, just think about this, upon seeing the Prophet ﷺ, the camel was moved to tears because it finally felt that there was relief. Here is the healer. Here's the one who's going to relieve me from my uh, owner who has put me to work and is starving me. And so he brought that out even in animals. The bird who was um, um, uh, the, the nest of uh, chicks that was taken away and the mother bird who was flapping its wings you know, furiously because its babies were taken and the Prophet ﷺ admonished the Sahabi, the Sahaba who did it and said, who hurt the feelings of this mother bird? So many other incredible stories, even the palm tree, as we all know from the Sirah, when it wept for him, when he moved his mimbar, he went and he embraced it. And Uhud, when he was standing on Uhud and Uhud became, began to tremble, the Prophet ﷺ told it to calm down. So these are all ways that we can see so many, so many beautiful examples of his incredible empathic nature. There's a couple of other stories I'd also like to share. Um, one of the stories that I really uh, loved, uh, you know, or when I thought about this was, you know, Abu Jahl, as we know, was a great enemy to the Muslims and to the Prophet specifically. He caused, he, he tortured people, he did so much treachery. And yet when he was killed at Badr, his son Ikrama was devastated, obviously, at the loss of his father. And he wanted to meet with the Prophet Wasallam. And so he arranged a meeting. And look at the, again, empathic nature of the Prophet Wasallam. Here is the son of, of a man who caused so much, so much heartache and problems for the Prophet Wasallam and the Ummah. And yet the Prophet Wasallam was more concerned with his state. And he advised his Sahaba. He said, do not call him Ikrama ibn Abi the, the son of the ignorant right because this is it would hurt his feelings so he's thinking about subhanallah even the feelings of someone who uh, caused so much problems for him and then you know we know for example he taught us i mean so many subtle uh, things that we need to think about the uh, prohibition of two people for example speaking together privately and leaving out a third person what is this? It's teaching us be empathic. Think about other people around you. Don't be self-centered and self-absorbed. Your actions impact other people. Or when we know that in, in Salah, when he would, he would say that if he heard the cries of a child, he would shorten the prayers because he did not want to cause distress to the mother or the child. So here he's thinking of both of these people. And of course, I mean, so many examples, but the hadith that we're reminded over and over again, about uh, that the, the ummah is one body and if one part of the body hurts, the entire body hurts. All of this is to reinforce this concept of empathy. And again, why is this relevant? Why is this so important? Because for the longest time, the gold standard of intelligence has always been IQ, IQ, IQ. And subhanAllah, only recently, about 1990, when this term of emotional intelligence was first coined and then it was expanded on in 1995 by Daniel Goleman, who's the leading sort of authority on emotional intelligence, did they come to realize that the superior form of intelligence is in fact emotional intelligence? And I just, for me, that was so powerful because subhanAllah, we know that he, our Prophet وسلم, is called the unlettered prophet. So by their standards, you know, by the IQ standards, they would not ever maybe know of how incredible he was. But now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped them to understand that none of that matters, it doesn't matter how you know your grades on a on a test or how well you do in, or you know your abstract thinking skills if you don't have these key qualities that make you that humanize you that make you able to relate to other people and that lead with compassion that display these beautiful attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we know that that's what makes a person truly intelligent and all of that is found in the Prophet Sallallahu so to hear these people who for the longest time were always praising one form of intelligence shift to a place where now they recognize that the superior form of intelligence is in fact emotional intelligence. And then to know on top of that, subhanAllah, that our Prophet وسلم, was again the paragon, the, 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 the exemplar in every single way of, of all virtue, as I said, but especially of this is just so another proof of who he is. I mean, subhanAllah, just to give you 
a quick um, a little uh, footnote here, the Harvard Business Review, when they came to understand emotional intelligence, this is what they said about it. They said, this is a revolutionary paradigm shattering idea. And then they also chose an article that Daniel Goleman wrote called What Makes a Leader, which is all based on this, that he's identifying that a person who with high emotional intelligence is the most effective, the, 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 the best type of a leader. And again, so many things have been confirmed for us. We know uh, that our Prophet has been recognized by non-Muslim sources as the most influential human being to ever walk this earth. We know who he is, alhamdulillah, and we have the gift of being able to utter his name, alhamdulillah, and that's why the work of Celebrate Mercy is so, so important. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise, uh, I mean, uh, uh, reward all of them and, and give them continued tawfiq in all that they do for celebrating the praise of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and teaching, teaching us to love him as he deserves to be loved uh, and, and to, uh, to spread his light to as many people as possible. So inshallah, I'm going to um, stop here because I have I love this topic and I really, really could. I, I promise you, I could talk about so many parts of this, but I want to allow for questions. So inshallah, I'm going to stop here and uh, let's see if we have any questions, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair, jazakumullah khair. There's a question that I see right now, um, uh, a written question. And uh, those of you who want to raise your hand and use the mic, please go ahead and raise your hand. We'll shift between microphone and written. Um, is it okay for a husband to be very strict and harsh on children to counterbalance the generosity, sympathy, empathy of a mother in order to keep discipline balanced? Or is it better for the husband to be kinder Obviously, like, I'm sure you don't know who she's talking about or how what, what that means, but right. harsh, what harsh means. Yes, I think that's exactly the thought that came to mind, that that's a very uh, subjective, you know, I need to, to know, need to know more details about the exact temperament and personality because harsh could mean so many different things, and you know, depending on who's interpreting it. But I think generally speaking, when we look to the prophetic example with uh, throughout his, you know, uh, whether it was with his own children or his grandchildren, he always led with mercy. And uh, for the male figure, I think, you know, it's important to have have to model yourself after him and not to think that you have your own brilliant philosophy of parenting that's going to be more successful. There's nothing that's going to be more successful than following the example of the Prophet ﷺ. And if he was affectionate and he was compassionate and he was gentle, as we learned from the last session with uh, Sidi, uh, Sheikh Hisham uh, Mahmoud and Sheikh Ubaidullah, we covered the, the beautiful qualities of, of gentleness that the Prophet ﷺ had, which were recognized by all of those people who were around him. His children or the people who were, who served him. So those are the qualities that I think we uh, all, male or female, should adopt in our parenting to truly be gentle. Harshness, I think, is really just when a person doesn't have that sense of control and they're trying, because, you know, there's different philosophies. There's the authoritarian and then there's the authoritative. And sometimes people confuse the two. Authoritarian models of parenting lead to harshness. Authoritative is leadership. There's no, you don't need to be harsh to be an effective leader. Mm. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Zainab uh, sent in a question. I would assume that for a person to, to truly show empathy, they must be a good listener. Can you give advice on how to truly be an active listener? How do you truly remove yourself from the conversation and be present with the other person? That is an excellent question. Thank you, Zainab, for uh, asking that question because, you know, again, I gave you guys one aspect of this entire framework of emotional intelligence, but when you study it in the structured way that it's presented, it actually uh, it helps you to understand how each quality kind of builds upon the other. So in order to be empathic, you need to re really start from the top, which is self-awareness. And this is the first uh, area that you develop. So in order to really be self-aware, again, I wish we had time because I could go into the details of what self-awareness is, but just simply speaking, you understand that, you know, uh, first and foremost, you, we have a purpose here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for a, a reason. We're here to worship him. And that is informed, or we're informed about how that relationship with him and his creation plays out by studying aqidah. So we study our aqidah and then we study our sharia and fiqh, which again gives us more details about how to interact with one another. And then 
uh, to go more inward, we study your temperament, right? So a person's temperament, which is mizaj, and uh, will reveal their uh, shortcomings, what strengths they have, what weaknesses they have. And then, of course, that leads into the next uh, part of emotional intelligence, which is self-regulation. And this is where we get taskiyat and nafs. Now, taskiyat and nafs is where we can hone in a lot of these qualities that requ that emotional or empathy require. Because if you're not cleansing your heart spiritually and you're not aware of the fact that maybe you have anger issues or impatience in your you know, you have so then you have negative thoughts. These are all diseases of the heart. So when you actually study, for example, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf's book, which I have right here, right, Purification of the Heart, 25 diseases of the heart are revealed to you. You work on yourself first, and what that does is it reveals, well, these are your shortcomings, shortcomings, these are your strengths, this is your mujahida. So if listening is a problem because maybe you're patient impatient, maybe you are too self-involved and self-absorbed, and you have ajab, you have vanity, you need to then root out those diseases. And then, inshallah, the skills of becoming more empathic just start to naturally grow. So it really, do, you really do have to start from the basics. Jazakallah khair. Another question from uh, Amara. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair for breaking your fast with us. <laughs> I will reward you for your time. Amin. I have a question when it comes to empathy. How does empathy play into boundaries? I've been in situations where I feel overly guilty about putting those boundaries up when I know I can be of service to someone or a situation, but I'm often taken advantage of. How can we balance empathy and boundaries when the need is overwhelming? Oh my God, you guys are asking the best questions. I yeah. love it. Thank really you. Really so good much. ones, yeah. Really excellent, excellent question. Who is this by? Which sister, what was her Amara name? Amara Ghani. Amara Ghani, may Allah bless you. What an awesome question. So I love this question because what it really does is it goes back to intention. And when we focus our intention on pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before worrying about pleasing people, which is where empaths get a lot, they get in trouble. As an empath, I know for many years, I struggled with the same dynamic of wanting to do too much and then feeling that I was being taken advantage of. But this is where I, this is my philosophy and what's worked for me for many years is I always check my intention. When someone asks of anything of me, I sit with myself for a moment and I think, A, what is my need? Why am I doing this? And if I'm uncomfortable or if I feel I'm being, you know, like it's not, maybe the, the terms are not met on something where I will be sincere, right? Where I can actually be sincere in what I'm gonna do, I won't do it or I'll request, can we switch it up to accommodate my heart? Because I one, one of the things I never want to do is ever do anything with insincerity, where I tell someone, sure, I'll help you out. But then in my heart, I'm resentful. Oh, I feel forced to, to do this. They're tied my hands. They're going to guilt me later. No, all of that is playing into worrying about pleasing people. But when you're worried about pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you realize that the most important thing is sincere action. And so what you do is you stop, you have that internal dialogue. And then if you need to switch things up a little bit so that it makes you feel more at peace with the decision, then you proceed. And if you don't, you don't do it because it's worse to be a person of pretense and to do it with a two-faced, two right? A person than to do it, uh, to not do it at all because you don't want to invite all that negativity and resentment that can be a seed which uh, causes more corruption in the heart and possibly the relationship down the line. I've seen so many people ruin their relationships with people because they will admit, you know, in a session, for example, that, yeah, they, they I always felt like I had to do this and this and this. And so I'm like, why did you feel you had to do anything? You know, we have choice and you should make better decisions next time so um there's uh i think zahra was going to use the mic to ask a question here zahra batul oh, okay mashallah. go ahead zahra okay and my question is that i think you're nine years old is that right mashallah. yeah mashallah. <laughs> um my question is that how do you be empathetic to your family? 
Oh, I, first of all, thank you. Thank you for having the courage to come on the mic. I love it. Uh, and thank you for your wonderful question. Again, um, you know, we just look to the Prophet ﷺ. He was always uh, concerned about everybody, not just people, uh, you know, outside of, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, people of influence or people of importance. No, everybody, everybody's concerns were his concerns. Certainly his family were, were he, you know, he took uh, their burdens. And so we have to just look to his example and remember that your family, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with parents, with siblings, with aunts, uncles, and sometimes they might uh, test you, but inshallah, they're still, uh, they're, they're, they're a part of you and they make du'a for you and inshallah, you'll be reunited with them in the best of places in the next world. So you want to always keep your ties strong and keep uh, that love flowing. And so to be more forgiving, to be more gentle, that's what is required sometimes with the people closest to us. But that's really a, a display of empathy is that I'm just going to make excuses for people. And so we look again to that prophetic wisdom of making more excuses for people, which is the opposite of su'adhan, right? We have husnadhan, we have 70 excuses. Certainly we should do that for our family members. MashaAllah, another question here. Uh, maybe we'll just take a couple more, two more. Um, this, is a, this is a big one too. How do we address the lack of empathy within our masajid, lack of empathy for women and our journey or for black Muslims and their journey? What are some applicable steps to rid ourselves of this without empathy towards others? How can we really have unity at all within our communities? MashaAllah, again, amazing questions. Jazakumullah khairan. You know, as someone who in Tariq, I think has a similar sort of spirit, you know, we've been doing Dawa, I've been doing Dawa for a long time. Uh, and I really think we have to build people up. We have to build our youth up. We have to empower people to have a voice and to not be afraid to use that voice. Because I see a lot of people witnessing problems in their communities, but then they kind of, because, uh, you know, this is what Shaitan does. He makes everybody feel powerless. And once you feel powerless, then you just observe problems and you gripe about them and you feel like there's nothing that can be done. That is the station of, you know, despair. It's a station of weakness. We're not weak people. We're people of act. To, you know, we, we act. So when we see a wrong action, we address it. And that means sometimes going outside of your comfort zone. Sometimes it means confronting a problem head on instead of, you know, indirectly sending messages from this to through this person and this person. You know, if you see, especially if it's within your masjid, something, a clear problem, go directly to the source, request a meeting with the top official of the masjid, the board members, raise, you know, your voice a little bit and just see what happens. Because if your principles are on the, you know, right, and you're speaking haq and truth, inshallah, Allah will give you tawfiq. But first and foremost, make sure again to purify your intention, but speak up. You know, I, I'm, I'm very much about empowering people and I don't think we should stay quiet ever when we see clear flat out injustices. But of course, again, we learn from the example of the Prophet that there's a way to do it with decorum, with subtlety, with, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, with adab. And so you don't need to go and, you know, cause a big commotion, but you certain, certainly shouldn't just shut down and think there's nothing that could be done. Speak up and do it with pure intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, and you will have tawfiq. Jazakallah khair. Uh, one, this, will be, this can be the last question here um, from Muhammad. Other Muhammad, um, sometimes our relatives act bad, bad in their relationships, family relationships. How do we show empathy to family members without making them feel like they are deviating from uh, Islam? Um, and he, I think that he had a related question about how can one pacify a bad relationship between a father and elder son so as to build, rebuild trust between them? Is it a good idea to consult someone from the outside, such as an uncle? Um, so kind of like family, family related questions here. Again, these are very subjective situations that we'd need to know more details to give you an accurate answer. But I think whenever you're trying to do maslaha between two people, uh, of course, look for the elders, look for the people, look for the, there might be a person, maybe, a, you know, some, someone in the family or outside in the community that uh, is respected by both parties. That's the kind of person that mediator that's going to be effective, because if you're 
father or uncle or whoever is, is, you know, not going to listen to maybe a younger person or someone who just doesn't have the same maybe cultural background, it's ineffective to get a mediator like that. So you want to be really smart when you turn to anybody for nasiha and counsel or mediation and look for the person that is going to be able to be a just arbiter between the two people and be welcomed by both people. And sometimes that's going to take some, you know, uh, thinking and reflection, maybe may need to make some uh, phone calls or so, but I think it, you can't just do it on the fly. And then as far as, you know, anytime you see, um, I think the first question, I'm just trying to clear, uh, make sure I understood it. It's someone who's maybe stepping out of their, like they're, they're not, uh, they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing and you want to correct them. Um, so again, you know, nasiha is something that not everybody um, should do, frankly, uh, until they learn how to do it, because you want to be very careful. People are at different levels. And so if you see someone, you know, straying from the path, you don't certainly don't want to uh, overstep and push them completely off the path. So if you're in a position where you do have mutual respect and you can separate their deeds from who they are, then you can inshallah appeal to their good nature and their the, the, that bond that you have with them. And just, you know, not harp on what they're doing and shame them, never shame anybody, because we don't, we're not to judge, we don't judge people, we offer counsel out of love. So if your advice is from a place of love, then it will, the, it will be received. But if you're coming from a place of judgment, or, you know, you're disgusted by this person, or they're, you're too worried about the impact it's having on you and your family, I see a lot of people, they're not thinking about the other, the person, and they're standing with Allah, it's more the ramifications of their deeds on them, that it's going to reflect badly on their family. So they're coming from a place that's totally wrong. When you see someone straying from the path of Allah, worry about them, right? This is your brother or sister, and you should be concerned for their akhirah. And then take that message of, of uh, love in your heart for them, and uh, with very beautiful words, try to bring them back, but leave all judgment aside. Don't focus on what they've done. Just tell them that Allah loves them and that you don't want any harm to come to them. If and there's a way to answer this in 30 seconds, uh, I just felt like this needed to be asked here. Assalamu alaikum, my son has autism and he doesn't show sympathy, empathy, and he is socially inept. As a parent, it becomes very stressful and hard because you're powerless to help. What can I do to help him oh, and subhanallah. more peace of mind? Well, thank you for asking. I have a nephew who's also autistic. So I feel, uh, you know, I mean, he's my nephew and this is your child. So I won't say I feel exactly what you're feeling, but I certainly have a ghayra for all children who uh, may be misunderstood because people don't have, again, the emotional intelligence to pick up on the cues that a person might be struggling in a certain way that you don't understand. And I can, I have spoken to several friends of mine who are very exhausted and exasperated, having to constantly defend the behavior of their children who are on the spectrum. And so I feel for all of, of, of those, and this is where we need more education. We definitely need more education in our community and we need to remove the burden on parents uh, and family members of constantly having to defend themselves by just letting people know that there are certain things to, you know, uh, sort of behaviors that are pretty, you know, uh, re according to, again, research, they, they, they're uh, pretty, um, what's the word, uh, common with people who are on the spectrum. And let's educate people to be able to pick up on, on what those behaviors are and then to have proper response, to not, you know, assume anything, to not, you know, do things like stare, Point. You know, there's a lot of education that I think uh, we need to have in our community about just being sensible and sensitive to people who are different and, 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 uh, and you know, increasing their own emotional intelligence and empathy. So that, is, sister, it, you shouldn't have to deal with, deal with that, honestly. This, is, this goes to the rest of us. All of us should be looking at ourselves and saying, what should we do to never let a mother ever feel that for her child? Uh, I, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove that feeling from your heart and you never have negative experiences again and that you're surrounded by emotionally intelligent people who uh, hold you and, and are supportive of you instead of uh, making you ever feel uncomfortable or unwanted. Audhu billah. Jazakum Allah khairan. Jazakum Allah khair. Um, so I'm going to make a couple of announcements. I don't know if you needed to take another couple minute break. Ustada. I'm going to pray uh, Maghrib inshallah okay, okay. and make dua for all of you in my okay. prayer and then I will be back. Inshallah. Okay, good. Because we're going to be selecting a prize winner in a minute inshallah and I'll explain a little bit about what that's about as you're taking a break inshallah. Um, so 
here we go. I, what I mentioned before is that we had, mashallah, first I want to thank Ustada Hosai for the beautiful lesson that she shared with all of us, mashallah. And what I was uh, saying earlier is that this, this program that you're attending right now is a nightly program at 11 p.m. Eastern every day. And if you haven't registered yet for this class, it's a free class, um, you can do so at the link that you see here on the flyer, celebratemercy.com slash heart. You can also use that same link, celebratemercy.com slash heart, to register for the uh, the class we have at 1 p.m. Eastern every day on Surah Yasin, where the entire chapter is recited, and then teachers go into the meanings of the verses of Surah Yasin. So by the end of Ramadan, we will complete the entire uh, chapter of Surah Yasin, inshallah. Um, and you can go back on our YouTube channel and see recordings from past uh, programs, past classes from the nightly class and from the daily class and make sure to subscribe on YouTube, inshallah. So what I wanted to mention is that some of you have been participating in these Celebrate Mercy contests. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that you all, some of you have been volunteering to help us with our fundraising. Uh, for example, yesterday uh, on Friday, uh, some of you were participating in this contest to try to get 20 of your friends to donate at least $1 to celebrate mercy. It sounds pretty easy, right? 20 people to donate $1 to celebrate mercy. Hopefully it's easy to convince someone of the value of this work and, and why they should donate a dollar to celebrate mercy. Some of you participated in that contest, alhamdulillah, and you qualified and uh, mashallah, some of you even raised much more than a dollar. A, a couple actually raised over a thousand dollars, mashallah. And because of your efforts in this contest, and we will be having more contests going forward in Ramadan um, that you can sign up for and participate in. Because of your efforts, we had about 29 people, mashallah, who qualified for this raffle to win an Umrah trip or to win major cash prizes. And what we're going to be doing today, inshallah, is selecting the winner of the Umrah trip and these cash prizes, mashallah. Um, I'm not sure, uh, maybe, you know, Lisa or Summer, you can tell me, or Rebecca, if, if Subhan is, is on with us and maybe he can share the, uh, or Rebecca, you can share the image of the um, those, you know, those who got the points, like basically everyone who qualified what, and how many points they got. Um, if that image can be shared here on Zoom, we can kind of read out the names and, and congratulate everyone who participated, inshallah. Um, but it would be, we had 29 individuals, mashallah, who got at least 20 friends who got 20 friends to donate at least a dollar. And so what we're going to do is Okay, good. I'm seeing it right here. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so these are the names of all of the people, mashallah, who, who, uh, who got over 20 points in the raffle. And uh, it's a little hard to see. I need to like maybe zoom in. Well, yeah, it's a little hard to read the names, but I'll, I'll try my best. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Um, yeah, Diwan, Rehana, Naima, Fardusi, Ursulan, Haifa, Maryam. Those were the people that got the top seven in terms of number of points, mashallah. And you can see how much money they raised here. Mashallah, some of them raised a lot of money for Celebrate Mercy to help us continue these programs. Sana, Basil, Farhan, Aminur Rahman, Faiza, uh, Majida, Princess Khan, Fatima, Omar, Shirajul Haq, Shahreen, Lusha, Amna, A, I'm not sure what A stands for, but that was their name on Launch Good, Batul, Azra, Arif, Fahmida, Omar, Yasmin, and Sakinat, and Afia, MashaAllah. And, and there were so many others that helped as well, Sharifa and Kareem and other, Kendall, uh, Ala, I think, or Ali, uh, no, you know, these are others that didn't qualify for the raffle, but they did, mashallah, so much work. Numasitu, Abdurrahman Sayyid, Aisha, Aida, Maryam, Muhammad, Islam, Omar, Anzar, 
Nadia Khan, Hanan Ahmed, Amina Khan. I hope I didn't miss anyone there, but mashallah, we had 29 individuals who qualified for this raffle today. We're going to be having another contest in a couple of days. So um, if you'd like to participate, you can let us know, inshallah. Thank you for sharing that image. I'm gonna go back to my screen here and see if you guys can see it. Inshallah. Hopefully uh, you all can see my screen here. Just let me know in the chat room. You can see my slide. Awesome, yes. So Esteva Hosai is gonna come on her webcam now. She's back, mashallah. Um, and what we're going to do is hold this raffle where we're going to select the winners of the Umrah trip, inshallah. And as we've always said, um, going to Mecca and Medina and Umrah, you know, or Jerusalem even is an invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, all of you put in a strong effort and uh, Ustada Hosai, you want to tell us about the hat that you have with all the names in it? I think you're muted right now. Hello, I was talking to myself for a second. How funny. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I told you last time, I well, I, Sidi Moaz is in here, but I, I, I'm i using a duff. I, I don't know why. I, I like it better. I can shake it around, you know, kind of do Yeah. It. So let me know. Do you want me to show me how many, like, how many how many papers are in there? Oh my god, there's a lot. Can you? I don't know if you guys. Oh can my tell. gosh. Can you wow. see? Yeah, and and some people had their name written more than once, like a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like Diwan and Rayhana, Mashallah. They probably yes. bought half of the names in there because they got they got so many points, Mashallah, that their name was repeated so many times. Yeah, Mashallah. mashallah. I was very impressed when I when I cut the, these all up and saw all the names. So mashallah, may Allah reward all of you. Um, so yeah, let me know. Are you ready for me to pull? First, the first prize is an Umrah trip, inshallah. And uh, so yeah, let's make some salawat and go ahead and select the winner. Right. So the just to make Umrah sure, it's, yeah, it's clear for everybody. I close my eyes and all the names are here. You guys are watching me, okay? So there's no, nothing's rigged here. <laughs> I just want to make and it Rebecca, clear. And Rebecca, you can turn on the chat so people can chat with each other publicly, inshallah. Yeah, and I think, you know, let's do, I think from last time, Siddi Tariq, from the amazing group you had last time, I really appreciated what you shared with me, that everybody was making dua for each other. And I, I think that's so smart to do that because you'll probably increase your chances of winning yourself if you don't think of yourself right now. Think of someone else who may have never been on this journey before and may never get a chance because they don't have the ability or means or, or timing doesn't work for them. So many things could factor in. But think of other people and say, Allah, if there's someone else who's more deserving, inshallah, let them win. Inshallah, inshallah. Okay, so here we go. Bismillah. All right, my eyes are closed. I don't know if you guys can see, but here we go. All right, I'm just going to mix it all up and pull. One, two, three. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is the name that I have. Okay. Fardusi Jaigirda. Wow, Fardusi. Wow, mashallah. 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 Amazing. Fardusi. This name, I recognize it. She has actually been working hard in all the contests, mashallah. She she has been qualifying for all the raffles, but never gets chosen. <laughs> you know? so, wow, I'm so happy for her, mashallah. I don't Amazing. know if she's watching right now. Fardusi, is Fardusi here? I'm sure she is because she, she, yes, she is here. Let's, let's make her a panelist. Hold on. How exciting. Mashallah Mubarak. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, she Pardusi. donates to other people's campaigns. Ya Allah. She does. She does that's a lot. Amazing. Actually, amazing. I'll say something about Fardusi is that half an hour, half an hour before the contest ends, she always says, who needs me to donate to their campaign so that I can help them get their team in the hat? <laughs> Subhanallah. There you are, mashallah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Aww. That's so sweet. I can't believe it, subhanallah. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's beautiful. I can't it, you guys have to understand, there are a lot of names in here, a lot. <laughs> I have been trying so hard since Giving Tuesday. This is the sixth contest. 
that I've been competing in. <laughs> wow. 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 It's December, I must say, right? Is that correct? Yes, yes, since December. Wow. And each contest, I keep thinking, you know, should I try again? And then I ask Allah, I make dua to Allah, and I'm like, what should I do? Should I try again? And I have this feeling and urge, and then I just do it again. <laughs> I don't know how many people are annoyed with all the messages and texts and emails that I've been sending them, but alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful and uh, for where, where, are you based, for where are you based, Where are you based? Michigan. 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 Wow. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. I think someone else from Michigan recently won a major prize too, uh, last time around. And, and, um, and mm -hmm. you know, what, what is this uh, going on a trip like this mean to you? As soon as obviously, as soon as the pandemic is lifted and we can go on trips like this again, what does this mean to you? Oh, it means the world. I have been making so much dua to be able to do this. Um, you know, when Sister Malika won, and she said that she was the only one in her family that hasn't gone, I'm like, that's me too. <laughs> never been to I haven't gone either. I've never been to Umbra, no. And I honestly don't know when I would ever be able to go. So this is such a great opportunity for me. Thank well, you. Well, so you can much. redeem this. You know, you, you have you have a few years to redeem this. Don't worry. You don't have to go right away. You know, we, we won't rush you. But whenever is best for you, inshallah, you have a free trip you know, um, through this contest. And this mm -hmm. is an invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that your daughter there? Yes, this is my daughter, Afreen. Afreen, <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Are you proud of your mom? Yeah, she actually screamed and I got scared. So I went <laughs> under my blanket. She screamed and, she, and you got scared. <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh, yeah, that's it's amazing, mashallah. Well, your mom did an amazing job, and inshallah, we'll all count as a sabaka jariya for her. Um, all the work she's done, she's helping teach people about the Prophet Sallallahu by helping celebrate mercy with funding our programs. So we're going to be honored to have you with us on one of these trips, inshallah, very soon, hopefully. Oh, but whenever yeah. is best for you, you'll be joining us. So jazakumullah khair for all your efforts. Thank you for this wonderful, amazing. Do you have any words for those who may be considering joining a contest like this, or maybe they didn't qualify, or maybe they qualify but didn't win, like on just your persistence is pretty amazing. Any words of advice? Uh, first of all, make dua, make dua, make dua. Make as much dua as you possibly can to Allah. And secondly, just keep trying. I mean, at first, the first few contests, I didn't know who to contact. I was mostly doing friends and, cl you know, close friends and family. And then I started reaching out a little more and a little more. And these last few contests, I just, I contacted everyone that I possibly knew. Wow. And Alhamdulillah, there were people I didn't expect that were donating and they donated every single contest. People I've never met before that I've only known through, you know, Instagram or Facebook. And Was it you that said you were contacting like friends from high school? Yes. <laughs> Mashallah. I, my old high school teachers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my mom. laughs> Mashallah. Well, thank you, Jazakumullah Khair, for all your efforts, and uh, inshallah, and, and I always remember that, you know, you're one of those people like, 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 Ustad Fadwa, like Rushda, at the very end, and you come in and you say, who can I give to? Who can I give to to help you guys qualify? Who can I, I'll donate to your campaign, and mashallah, it's always beautiful to see you helping everyone else as well, mashallah. The so Sabiqun, right? The Sabiqun, the forerunners, that's, that you're one, amongst those, inshallah. MashaAllah. Jazakumullah khair, Fardusi. And uh, Ustada Hosai, you're going to be selecting two more names here for like there's a $1,000 cash prize and a $500 cash prize. So let's go to the $1,000 cash prize, inshallah. Here we go again, you guys. Same process. Uh, and Sister Fardusi's name, I don't, I don't, I think I took it out. Uh oh, maybe I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. If you pick it, you can just. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let me, oh, wait, is this it? No. Because her name yeah, may be more it. than once. Okay, I got it out. Okay, so here we go. Bismillah. Again, here we wow. go, you guys. Bismillah rahman rahim <laughs> Here we go. And the name that I get is Diwan Shahid. Diwan, mashallah. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Diwan. This is his second, by the way, this is his second time 
to win the one thousand dollar prize. Oh, <laughs> to win the Umrah, but this is the second time, mashallah. And I'll tell you something about Diwan is that the first time when he won a thousand dollars, you know, Subhan told me that he donated half of that back to celebrate mercy. Subhanallah. Yeah, and now he's won. You know, look at this. You know, like uh, your sadaq, your 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 wealth does not decrease from sadaqa. That's the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu right? Diwan, your 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 wealth does not decrease from sadaqa. So look what this this is a proof of that. He donated half of his prize money back. And then he got a thousand more. Double more. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. That's amazing. And he's someone who's actually lost family members and relatives from the pandemic. He's in the he's in New York City, mashallah. Um, and uh, you know he's he's uh, he's he's you know gone through a lot over the last few weeks. So Jazakumullah Khair Diwan, he got the most points. He may have break, broken a record, almost ninety points. <laughs> so he had like over around 80 friends who donated using his link mashallah so jazakumullah khair diwan that's amazing. amazing now let's go to the next person for the for the final major prize of five hundred dollars everyone who everyone who's in this hat or the 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 duff is going to actually win a prize because they're going to win books and other things inshallah but we're just selecting on camera we're selecting those three so one person to win five a five hundred dollar prize here let's see who it is Oh, it's D1 again, so I should <laughs> we'll take him out, again. right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> take him out. All right, we'll do it again. His his name is written a lot in that hat in the in the coop in the duff. <laughs> it is Rehana Rana. Rehana, mashallah, Rehana. She is uh she's someone who's always at the very top of the list as well, mashallah. Rehana wins the five hundred dollar prize. Rehana. Do you want to come on webcam or microphone? Because you have also been qualifying for every single contest and your name never gets chosen <laughs> for the major <laughs> prizes. But this is the time when you did get chosen. Mashallah, Raihana, are you here? And can we maybe make you a panelist okay. here? Is Raihana online? She is okay. Someone said she is online. Inshallah. Okay, I think yes, yes, Rehana, you can now come on mic and webcam. Assalamualaikum. Can you guys hear me? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I'm I'm super excited for my friend Ferdusi. We actually grew up together, um, <laughs> so and she actually fun. told me this morning, like Rehana, I'm not gonna do it, and like hours later, she said my mom convinced me otherwise. So sure. I'm just still trying to get over like her winning. Um, <laughs> I, I'm still trying to process that. But, um, <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, thank you, thank Rihanna, you. for all your efforts. You're you're usually like one of the first couple of people to qualify. You go really quickly as soon as we start a contest. She gets I don't know how she does it. She gets all these people to donate, and uh, it's amazing. You're you're also you're also based in Michigan, too, Rihanna. No, I grew up in Michigan, but I'm in Boston now. Boston. Okay. Well, Jazakumullah Khair, you know, um, for all you've been doing for these contests, you're helping us fundraise. It's amazing, mashallah. So, you know, uh, inshallah, we hope it counts as, as a ibadah and as a sadaqa jariyah for you, for everyone that, you know, could be that $1 that you raised from that person or $10 or $50. It, it helped, you know, it helped one person to get a scholarship to attend a program that changed their life. You never know. You never know. But inshallah. It, it counts as a sadaqa jariyah for you. And I hope I hope you, st you stick with these contests, inshallah. Maybe, maybe you'll get chosen for the Umrah trip, <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of gave up on the Umrah trip, <laughs> but I am, I am happy with the Don't 500. You, didn't you say something in the WhatsApp group about like the dua that you make? Yes, yes. Can you share? Um, my teacher did. We had a class two weeks ago. She's actually Sheikh Yasser's wife. Oh, okay. is our um, local um, scholar in yeah, Boston. Yeah, yeah. So she taught it to all of us, and it was basically a class on renewing intentions and doing everything in the name of Allah. So, you know, that's always been on my mind, especially during these contests. But, um, no, it's, it's been a good experience so far. And I do want to thank Celebrate Mercy for all that you guys have been doing. Um, I learned of your organization this year when actually Ferdusi gave me the link to enter. Um, and I could definitely see myself still supporting your organization throughout Thank the upcoming you. years. Yeah, I remember you even signed up yourself as a monthly donor, you know, um, uh, I think yesterday or the day before. So 
Jazakumallah khair, you know, thank you for all your efforts. You know, you really, uh, you really, um, you really, uh, you know, work very hard with these contests and inshallah, it's, it's all going to, most importantly, it will count inshallah as a sadaq al jariyah for you. Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And just a final reminder, and, and thank you, Ustada Hosai, for everything again, for, for helping make that, you know, really fun raffle for us and for your lesson earlier today. Inshallah, we'll have her on many more, um, we'll have her on many more um, Celebrate Mercy programs going forward. Uh, inshallah, she's, she's, she's done so many of them with us. And inshallah, hopefully she'll join again uh, for future ones, inshallah. Uh, just a reminder that if you're interested in joining one of these contests, inshallah, if you're interested in joining a contest, um, then just visit celebratemercy.com slash contest. And you'll join a WhatsApp group and we'll get you started. And we're actually going to have one starting on Tuesday. Inshallah, we're going to have another one on Tuesday, um, starting Tuesday evening, uh, inshallah, where there's going to actually be bigger prizes, bigger prizes for that too. So, um, and for Rehana and Diwan and um, the others who are like in the top seven, you will automatically get a $50 gift card. Uh, sister, I believe it's Sister Naima. We'll also be getting a gift, a surprise gift, because she raised the most money. So we'll be, we'll be announcing that in the WhatsApp group as well, inshallah. But thank you all for joining. Thank you all for participating in the contest. And inshallah, we want to urge everyone here to please uh, help us to hit our fundraising goal for the end of Ramadan, inshallah. And you can donate at this link, launchgood.com slash CM. That's launchgood.com slash CM. And don't forget that we also have uh, you know, Zakat, where Zakat eligible because we have a scholarship fund where we use Zakat for that. And I do want to remind everyone of this class as well, the Quranic Arabic class. Um, this discount is not correct. It's actually a 10% off discount. So even though this big discount has expired, you can still get a 10% discount off of this 18 month Quranic Arabic course. Um, and you can go to fawakit.org slash C Mercy to learn all about this amazing 18 month Arabic course and they send you books and it's it's just it's a really amazing class. I highly recommend it inshallah and you can learn more at the link that's in the chat inshallah. Jazakumallah khair everyone we'll look forward to seeing you hopefully in the class about Surah Yasin which is tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time inshallah. Take care and assalamu alaikum. <laughs>